Today, we're going to be giving you guys the best settings for Modern Warfare 3 on PC. This includes better FPS, graphics, audio, aim, and more. To start off, we're obviously going to be using a controller. If you have a mouse, you want to put your input device as a mouse. We're going to go to edit button layout. I have play on tactical flipped. This is if you want to change it from default to tactical, you can do that right here. Next, you got to make sure the flip L1 and R12 is on if you're playing on flip again. So I have mine set to on controller vibration off this doesn't really give you a tactical or an advantage in any way so i think vibration is kind of useless but you know if you're trying to compete or trying to be the best don't use it dead zone inputs i put the show more and there's a new setting in modern warfare 3 that previously all the cause didn't have but you can actually test your dead zone so you can see my stick move around and this shows also the maximum dead zone which we'll get to in a second but you can kind of see if your dead zone's messed up Sometimes my dead zone move a little bit by its own, but if I click it in, it kind of stops and it stays still. But what left stick max does basically is like it reduces the uh, the max on the stick. So usually people have it on 99, which is this is like all the way. And then basically my in order for me to reach the maximum dead zone, I have to go all the way to the end of the stick, as you can see here. But what this does lowering the left stick max is instead of having to go all the way. Now, as soon as I hit this red, is it's this is the max. So this automatically puts me at the max sprint, max speed, max movement. So it basically reacts a little bit quicker, which is pretty damn cool to do. So this is something you should definitely look at. So basically, I have my left stick minimum on two. That way, it's very reactive. But I have my left stick at max at 75. That way, as soon as I move my stick around, it, it reacts a lot quicker as well basically making my movement a lot more fluid and easier now if you go too low in hindsight like you think it'd be good but you don't want to go too low because you're going to notice it's actually going to hurt your movement my right stick minimum is usually a default is five but i like to roam around three to five so right now i have it on four it just, just depends if you're getting a lot of stick drift and usually you got to play on five um, but if you can lower it a little bit more and get used to it it's better and then my right stick max you want to leave it a default which is 99 left trigger right trigger make sure these are both at zero for my sense i like to play on 661 this is kind of the go-to pro sense is what a lot of the pro players are using nowadays it's up to you something i recommend is between six to eight cents don't really go any higher or any lower than that that's what, that way you can snap but you also have good centering and good consistent aim so 661 is kind of the go-to um it's just overall the best sensitivity to use then something you really want to do is have your aim resp response curve type on dynamic this is a setting that pro players have been using for years. Uh, 90%, maybe more, use this setting dynamic because it's that good. It basically allows you to snap on people a lot easier, hit that, have that snap ability, because what it does is like it goes from fast to slow. So when you're moving your stick around, ideally, like standard, it just has the same speed at all times. Uh, but then what this does, it goes like fast. And then at the end, whenever you slow down your stick, it's going to slow down. So this makes you uh, be more consistent and able to really snap and hit those shots that usually you wouldn't on standard. So that's a really good setting. You definitely want to have that on. Aim assist type, I use default. You know, people talk about Black Ops sometimes. Black Ops got nerfed uh, in the past COD and I don't think is as good. But if you want to try it out, you can. I just prefer default. For the next important thing we're going to be talking about is gameplay automatic sprint you definitely want to have automatic tactical sprint on if you're not competing this this setting right here is going to make your movement like fire like you're going to be able to move a lot quicker you're going to be hitting some nice slides and that's because slide canceling is back so that's something you definitely want to have on grounded mantle you definitely want to have this on automatic airborne mantle partial and make sure you turn off automatic ground mantle off because this is going to make you mantle stuff a lot more when you really don't want to inverse slide and dive behavior i have this on standard in the previous card i had this on inverted because diving was more efficient but now in this game you're gonna want to slide easier so i slide right now with my right stick so basically all i have to do is click in my right stick so having this on standard allows me to do that a lot easier so all i have to do is slide click in my stick i slide and then i just press x to bring it bring my character back up plunging underwater free it, this is just when you're underwater you're gonna about you're gonna it's gonna be easier to move into water and definitely uh, you're going to notice the difference in that one. Trust me when I say this. Uh, these settings are pretty much default. Interact. I usually use tap to reload. Obviously, once you go to war zone, you're going to want to prioritize to interact. But tap to reload IMO is the best. Next, we're going to be going into some of the most important things. Uh, we're going to be going to the graphics. So display mode, full screen, exclusive. Obviously, make sure it's the right monitor. Make sure you're on the right screen refresh refresh rate so for example i'm at 240 hertz so it's 239.97 display resolution you all you just kind of want to make sure this is all right uh v-sync off 
and custom frame rate you don't have to use that some people like to run the the custom like especially like if you're in the menu uh for your brightness this is something that i like to play on a higher brightness than a default 50 just because i feel like it allows me to see a little bit better so i play on 53 54 so that's something you can do up to you and nvidia reflex low latency i have this on on some people like on boost i think they're both pretty good uh, i don't know if one's better than the other but a lot of people say i don't know if it's a placebo but you might as well put on blues uh, from what i've heard on is fine so i just kind of leave it there for my quality make sure your render resolution is on 100 diamond dynamic resolution off upscaling sharpening show more first of all put this on fidelity cast this is going to make your game look a lot sharper and clear yes it will run your fps a little bit more but at the end it's worth it i have my fidelity cast strength at 100 for that reason then i use filmic smaa and i put this on low on the anti-aliasing vram scale on 80 make sure this is off normal normal off low very low off off low off low and a, a lot of the reason why i'm going through fast three settings and a, a lot of the reason why these settings are kind of on the lower part is again we're, we're aiming for performance we're aiming for fps like we want the game to look pretty good but at the same time you know you got to find that balance so very low off 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 low near max low off off default so make sure you do that next on the viewing aspect i have my fov at 120 now this is kind of uh i'm just doing it for fun kind of thing if you really want to optimize aim assist and you know hit better shots it's really recommended i will say max 107 to like 95 that is around the FOV you should be aiming for in multiplayer. Once you pass 107 or like 103, it's it's known that you lose aim assist or something like that. To me, I'm just a content creator nowadays, dominating while having fun. And I just like the one at 20 FOV look and how it makes you look like you're going faster, etc. But if I really were to recommend to someone who's trying to compete or trying to be really good at the game, I would say between 95 to like 107. Or if you want to make it easier, just 105. Find an FOV between that uh, that you really like. Of course, I play on affected. I feel like you should be running affected unless you're under like 90 FOV. Uh, affected is just really good for it makes kind of the visual recoil less. I have my weapon field of view wide. Uh, you could try narrow or wide. Narrow is like the gun is bigger, but you can kind of see more of your screen in a way, like the center of your screen. Wide makes the gun smaller, which is like you can see more of your screen, but it kind of covers the center. So those are like the pros and cons when it comes to that. World motion blur off, weapon motion blur off. Obviously, this is going to affect their visual. You definitely, your visibility, you definitely want to have these things off. Better performance. Film grain on zero. This is a no brainer. First person camera movement, at least 50%. Another no brainer. Brainer. This is going to allow, like, you're going to have less visual recoil, less shaking on your screen. It's just going to make your game feel a lot better and smoother as you're playing. Inverted flashback. This is a cool setting. Not a lot of people know about this. I, I did try it on and I have play, played with it off. But basically, when you get flash, instead of getting white screened, it's like a it's like a black screened. And I don't know, the white is kind of annoying. It just depends, honestly, because the, the white kind of blinds you. The black, it's like, it's like, did my game turn off? Oh, no, never mind. I just got flashed, you know, <laughs> so it kind of tricks you. But it definitely it's like it's easier on the eyes. You know what I mean? But this is up to you completely. Next for the audio, I run audio mix. I run the home theater. I feel like it's one of the best. I also have it on stereo stereo master volume on 90 music volume on zero because there's no benefit to having music volume it could be quite annoying uh dialogue volume at 20 this is like when the characters are talking in game and telling you stuff effects volume at 100 one of the most important audio obviously footsteps etc voice chat volume at 22 so i can hear game chat if i really want to hear some people talking and cinematic music volume at zero if you obviously scroll all the way down, you can also change to one, you can turn off the juggernaut music, two, you can change the hit marker sound effects from Modern Warfare or Classic, but it's completely up to you. Now for the next thing, interface. There's actually some settings in here that you can mess around with. Now, color customization. This is something I used to have back in MW2 and I don't think I actually put it yet. I do have it here, awesome. Color filter, filter two. Color filter target, both. Then make sure this is at 100 and 100. What this is going to do is add that extra sauce, that extra color and saturation to your game. It's going to make it look less dull and more colorful. So you definitely want to try this out. Uh, another cool thing about the settings over here at the color is you can change, obviously, the colors of your enemies, of the color you want to be. So, for, for example, me on the minimap, I can change myself to pink. So when I'm playing, I'm pink. 
everything i do pink or purple whatever color that is or yellow you can make the enemy instead of enemy red you can make them green like aliens you know but that's just a really cool you can mess around with this if you want to you don't have to another thing here is your mini map shape you're going to want to make sure it's on square this is going to make your mini map slightly bigger which is a w because your mini map is extremely important something also to uh, talk about is the hud bounce so normally you want your hud bounce to be kind of in i haven't really changed the setting yet on the beta but you basically want to push it in that way when you're playing the game you can see your your mini map and your even like one your mini map is the most important thing so that comes a little bit closer to the center of your screen so when you're you don't have to look so far or stress so much your eyes to look at it you can look at it easier which will give you a lot of information also like your guns your ammo all that stuff comes in a little bit too which is a plus so that's really good and something you definitely want to kind of bring in together bring in more also another setting here that a lot of people don't know about is the crosshairs uh this is called the crosshair dot the center dot this is basically puts a little dot in the middle of your screen you ever you ever see the back in the day how people used to like put like a like a marker or a dot in the middle of the screen or like a tape or something this is basically that but in game so it gives you that little dot in game so whenever you're centering you're moving around the map your your dot that dot you see is the center of your screen at all times and it helps kind of like with centering and snapping on people it definitely is beneficial I personally am fine with default, but at the end of the day, it's up to you. If you want a larger dot, you can put a larger dot. If you want the largest, it's pretty big, but like you, you'll be perfectly centered on everything. So this is something really cool to know. And then if you go down to telemetry over here at custom, you can open this and this shows like your FPS counter, which you see in the top left for me, certain latency, pack of laws, kind of the three main important ones for me. It really, it's, this is kind of personal preference. Like if you want to see the temperature of your GPU, maybe your, you know, your GPU has been overheating or any of these settings, you definitely can put that on. And it's definitely, I mean, it's a pretty good plus. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. It would mean a lot to me if you like, comment, and subscribe. We'll be doing more tips so you don't want to miss out.